Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC. Oh, hold on, let me get that. Holy shit, my Torbach can text me when it needs a tool change? Joking aside, welcome folks to another episode of NYC CNC. And today I'm going to show how you can have your mill text or email you when it needs a tool change. I had the chance to tour the Glock factory in Fairlock, Austria about 10 years ago. And the plant manager had mentioned that their CNC mills, which they had hundreds of, and they ran lights out machining, could send a text message when the machine needed attention. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So it had been on my list of things to do. Uh, hey, let's add that to the Tormach. I don't have a tool changer and I don't actually want one. That's a whole other conversation. But I do like knowing when the machine needs attention and I'm not always in the same room or maybe I'm wearing earmuffs. And so it's nice to receive some other notification. With all the various types of technology out there today, this is actually pretty easy. So I'm going to show you how I built this little uh, board here and it uses something called a twine. Uh, and I've got that twine paired up with an Arduino to add a little more functionality. So I'll go through all the details of the hardware layout and the code as well. But what the important thing was the sort of de design philosophy here. I wasn't willing to have this interfere with my machine at all. I didn't want it to say have a magnet on the spindle that would be able to attract chips and may get in the way of either a coolant or if you've got one of the Tormach uh, lights. And I thought about, well, you could have something in where the motor is listening for noise changes or the belt position, but I didn't like that either. And the easiest way to do this probably would be Mach 3, but I'm not willing to hook my Mach controller up to the internet and have it running scripts or codes. So I was poking around the mill thinking about the right way to tackle this, and I opened up the controller door and saw an LED labeled spindle. And sure enough, when you turn the spindle on, that LED turns on, and when you turn the spindle off, it turns off. Voila. So on the little board here, what I did was I put a photo cell inside a piece of nylon, drilled out for a nice slip fit over that LED, and we just slide this onto the LED, and that is our method of detection. What's great about that is that not only does it detect when you need a tool change, but if, you, if your mill crashes or it hits a travel limit, the spindle will also stop, which will tell you again your mill needs attention. If you had just done, say, a Z retract that would tell you when the Z hit a tool change position, you wouldn't know if your machine had crashed. Let's take a closer look at the hardware, and then I'll walk you through the Arduino code, and then we'll go take a look at it in action again. Let's take a look at the hardware. Like I mentioned, I've got the twine on the left. There's a link in the YouTube video to where you can find out more about the Twine either from Amazon or from the Twine website. In the middle, I've got an Adafruit Perma Proto Board. These are great. If you want something that's more permanent than a breadboard, take a look at these. They're way higher quality, really nice pads. You can see them here on the Adafruit website where they enumerate all the benefits of these. So highly recommend them. I also use these Adafruit terminal blocks. I really like them. They're quick to attach. And when you want to plug it back in, all you have to do is just push your wire in and you're good to go. Really nice. And on the right, I've got a regular old Arduino. Happens to be an Uno, but uh, I think about any Arduino would work. And the Cloud Shield, again, that's from the folks at Twine. As for the actual hardware layout, pretty straightforward. At the top, I've got an, I call it an on-off switch. It's not a power switch. The unit is powered itself whenever the Tormach is on, but I don't always want to be receiving emails and text messages every time it needs a tool change, only sometimes. So if this is in the up position, it's not going to notify Twine, and if it's in the down position, it is. This is a three pin switch. We wire it with the top pin is nothing. The middle pin goes straight to five volts, and the bottom pin comes down via this jumper to both Arduino pin four, it's a digital pin four, and it's pulled low to ground with a 10K resistor. And I'll show you the code in a minute and you can see how that's programmed. For our photo cell, you can see here on the Adafruit website, 95 cents. That's my kind of price for a uh, component. And it's pretty simple to hook up as well. The one pin goes straight to five volts via this red jumper. I actually bridged it across here. I soldered it to the wrong row. And the other goes via this orange jumper wire to pulled low with a 10K resistor to ground, and then 
via this yellow over to analog pin three on the Arduino. I also wired in this micro uh, USB that can power the Twine. The Twine has two uh, AAAs in it that last for quite a few months, but uh, I hate batteries, so I figured, well, I've got power here anyways. Let's just uh, wire this up so this can plug into the Twine and uh, solve that problem. Oh, and then finally, of course, I've got uh, five volts in ground being pulled over from the Shield and Arduino to the breadboard. So that's about it for the hardware side. Let's now take a look at the Arduino code. Almost forgot to show you how I made the photocell holder. I took a piece of 3 8 nylon and I drilled it out with a number 8 drill, which is 199, and that proved to be a nice slip fit over the LED, which is perfect. It would hold on there, but not you know, damage it or otherwise be problematic. So we put that in there. I only had this semi-opaque nylon and I wanted to block any ambient light. So I went ahead, as you can see in the actual end result here, and used some gaffer's tape and just took some strips and tried, you, know, you don't have to be neat about this, you just want to block out the light uh, and just wrapped it around like so. If you have black nylon, you probably wouldn't even have to do this. You could use aluminum or metal too, I guess, but I didn't like the idea of anything conductive or heavy being uh, on the a PC board like that. Then for the photo cell, which I've got another one right here, just stick it in the end and then use a small punch and push it in your hole. You don't have to push it in very far if you don't want to. And then I took a small piece of tape. Uh, you can't see it here. I've got the back of mine heat shrunk sealed back in there just to keep it protected nice and neat. But you want to do something to block the light, again, to try and get as little uh, ambient light as you can in there. So I took another piece of gaffer's tape, and you might have to experiment with this a little, and just kind of folded it up like so. This will also help keep your um, leads off the photocell separated, which is important. And just stuffed it in there. Yep, exactly, just like that. So that'll block the light and keep them separated. I heat shrunk the leads like you saw there just to make sure again that they didn't uh, short out. So pretty simple. And again, by eliminating the ambient light, you can make sure you keep the control level on the programming, which we're about to get into here, as low as possible, which will ensure reliable functionality. Here is the Arduino code. I like to move pretty quickly through the code, but post a comment below or over on our Facebook page if you have questions about this, happy to answer them. You need to download and import the Twine library. We define a Twine as cloud. Analog 3 is our photocell sensor. We've got a bunch of variables and integers set up here. In this setup, we I did a lot of serial debugging, so that's why I've got the serial.begin, and then we define pin 4 as an input pin. That is the black toggle switch that uh, I mentioned earlier. And so in the loop, that's the first thing we do, is we read that digital pin four, and we figure out whether we want to talk to the twine or not. If that switch is up, it's low, and we say device is off, not reporting to the cloud, and we wait five seconds. If the switch is now low, or sorry, if the switch is now in the down position, which means it's high, the first thing we need to do is run a calibration so what we do is we say the initial value of the photo cell is the first reading of the photo cell. And we then say calibrate equals one. This will not calibrate again until we reset the Arduino. So now when we actually read the sensor value in the program, we store that value, but then we subtract from it the initial calibration value. And this is just one way of dealing with the fact that we want we don't care about the nominal values, we care about the change. So this is an analog input, so it's in Arduino that's uh, 0 to 1023. I don't care if the, an, the ambient light in the cabinet or in this setup it starts off at 50, 250, or 650. What I care about is how it changes when you turn the light on. So if it starts, when you start it up, if it thinks it sees 300 uh, units of ambient light, it will then 
store future values as if, for instance, 303 or 307 would actually be stored as 3 or 7. And again, this is just debugging stuff. And that comes, but that, so that comes in handy here when I want to actually figure out has the light been turned on? You simply say, is sensor value greater than 100? So that's 100 greater than whatever the base calibration is. So then what you do is you say, once it's been turned on, you can change the state of ignore first spindle. Because remember, we don't want it to tell us it needs a tool change until the spindle has been running and it turns back off. In other words, you don't want a text message when you just turn the mill right on. So to get a text message, it needs to see that the sensor value is below 100. It needs to see that we've already had the spindle above 100, which we did by this ignore first spindle if statement here. And then state equals zero, I'll come back to in a second. Cloud.trigger, that tells our twine to go ahead and do what it needs to do. And again, debug. And then state equals one. If you're not familiar with the state concept in programming, where right now you don't want to receive a text message again until the spindle has been turned back on. In other words, if it remains idle, you don't want the program to think, hey, these three criteria continue to be satisfied. I'm going to keep sending text messages. So you say state equals one, which means this program will not run again, or sorry, this if statement will not be satisfied again until you get back to here which is if the sensor value is greater than 100, the light's back on, then state will go back to equaling zero. So I've got this code on the NYC CNC website. If you go to Projects, Tormach Twine, Cloud Tool Changer, click on that, scroll down, and there is the Arduino code right there. The video will be here as well, too, when, the, when it gets uploaded. Let's take a look at the Twine setup. It's quite simple. Once you've got your Twine set up uh, out of the box and you plug in a Cloud Shield, you can log in and click add rule and you would simply say when cloud shield is triggered i want to receive an email and you would type in your email address here and you would type in your phone number and text message here and again my application here was the cnc mill lots more you could do with this i think one of the examples that the folks at twine talk about is if you uh, want to know when your laundry machine is done super easy to do that so I thought I'd show installing the device and go ahead and put it to a test in one cut so you can see there's no funny business here. I've got my phone sitting right there. I won't uh, touch it. And what we're going to do is put the device in the machine. Go ahead and slide our uh, LED device over the spindle LED like so. Plug in our power to the Arduino. And now we're ready to go, but we want to flip our switch into the down position so that you will see that it will notify. I guess though to show off first, uh, I will show an operation without it turned on so you can see again that uh, it only works when we've got it activated. So the switch is up. It will not notify us via text message. I'm going to run this sh very short G code program. Okay, so no notification there. Now we'll go ahead and turn it on. We'll run our program and we'll see how long the delay is for us to get a text message. Okay, there we go. Oops. See if we can get it to focus here. There we go. I think that's pretty darn cool, folks. Uh, hopefully you guys will have enjoyed this as well. If you have, as always, folks, I do appreciate the comments below and liking the video. Share it with your friends and let me know what questions you've got. And otherwise, that's all I've got for today, folks. Thank you very much. Take care and see you soon.